From the Daily Reporter, this is Ethan Duran. Welcome to Blues and Blueprints, a podcast about construction and development across Wisconsin. I'm Ethan Duran of the Daily Reporter, and this is the Brews and Blueprints podcast. I'm here with the City of Milwaukee Commissioner of City Development, Lafayette Crump. How are you today, Commissioner? I'm great, Ethan. Thanks for having me here. Thanks for being on. So tell me a little bit about the Department of City Development and your role there. Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm Commissioner, uh, been Commissioner for uh, about four years now, a little less than four years, and uh, appointed uh, under Mayor Barrett and uh, kept on, uh, fortunately, by uh, Mayor Johnson. And uh, I've got my reconfirmation uh, coming up soon. Uh, hopefully, when this comes out, uh, that will have been uh, handled well, uh, and this won't be a, a memoriam to uh, to my time as commissioner. Uh, but our role at the uh, Department of City Development is uh, truly to try to improve the quality of life for all Milwaukeeans. Uh, we do that by guiding and employing development. Um, we, we do that um, with a goal of creating jobs, creating opportunities, building wealth uh, for individuals, strengthening the urban environment, uh, and also promoting uh, equity and sustainability. You know, it's it's funny you mention, um, you know, uh, family supporting jobs and equity. I think those are, th- you know, themes that sort of tie in with the um, demand for a construction workforce right now. And I understand Milwaukee has a few initiatives to um, help supply that. I wanted to start off by asking, you know, what strategies is the Department of City Development using you know, to expand the construction workforce in general in Milwaukee? and, you know, address the demand for current and future projects. Yeah, I think, um, you know, a key part of it is, first of all, having an environment where um, folks can believe that if you are entering the construction field, that there are going to be plenty of opportunities to, uh, to practice your craft. And whether that be folks who are looking to have construction jobs or folks who are looking to start their own businesses to branch out on their own. And so when we have a healthy development environment um, from uh, new construction to renovations to uh, attracting businesses to uh, building housing, the more of that that's happening, the more uh, people will feel uh, uh, comfortable and excited about entering those fields. So one thing we try to do is certainly support the uh, development growth in our city. In addition to that, we work closely with other departments within the city, um, most notably uh, Department of Neighborhood Services, Department of Public Works, and the Office of Equity and Inclusion, which ensures that on uh, the various projects that have any sort of city financial assistance, uh, that there will be opportunities for diverse businesses and diverse workers. And one of the things that I've certainly seen over my tenure, not just at the department, but, um, you know, being um, associated with the construction field for a number of years is that because the city has been stringent about its requirements, you are seeing much more um, happening um, in the private sector, even when there is no city requirement. And that's really what we're trying to foster is that. Uh, the utilization of uh, diverse businesses, diverse workers, local workers, um, all of the the different people who have an interest in the field and who have an opportunity uh, to grow, um, you know, opportunities for others uh, and diverse groups of people. Um, It's something that's very important to us. And when you see that expanding out beyond the public sector into the private sector, even when there is no mandate, uh, that's when we know we've been really successful. So it's been um, really pleasing to see that happen over the years. I'm happy to hear it. What type of programs under the city um, are used to attract more people into construction careers? Well, I think it's, uh, again, it, it's really about the the opportunity that exists. Um, you know, we, we certainly... 
um, you know, take time, whether it be through our Earn and Learn program, the Mayor's Summer Youth Internship program, uh, efforts by Workforce, uh, I'm sorry, um, you know, Employ Milwaukee, efforts by, uh, you know, our, our various departments who are looking for city workers um, who sometimes then enter the private sector. All of that, you know, amalgamated, um, you know, helps to uh, attract people. In addition, the mayor has been a huge proponent of partnerships. And so we partner with organizations like MATC, with um, uh, WRTP Big Step, uh, and others to um, introduce people to the construction trades. Uh, but more than that, it is ensuring that folks know that uh, if we do take the time and the effort to enter into these fields, there are going to be opportunities and they will be lasting opportunities. So um, when you have a city that is attracting people, when you have a city that is all about growth, uh, when you have a city that sees uh, you know, both vertical and horizontal development with some of the efforts we've made with respect to infrastructure um, and the partnerships we even have with our neighboring communities, um, all of that helps to lay the groundwork where folks know that if they are entering the construction field, there are some real and sustainable opportunities. What measures are being taken to promote diversity and, and inclusion within the city's construction and development projects? Well, the efforts uh, via the Office of Equity and Inclusion, where they have targets for uh, small businesses, local businesses, as well as uh, local workforce, um, you know, th those efforts tend to ensure that there is a significant number of people of color uh, on projects, significant number of women um, on projects, particularly women-owned businesses. Um, and then beyond that, the conversations that we have at the department um, in working with um, developers and contractors uh, on the projects that they are interested in doing and the projects that they are doing. Um, also, our department, um, our Neighborhood Improvement um, uh, Development Corporation, which does some of its own contracting, and our Homes MKE project, where we um, you know, very deliberately uh, brought in um, a number of different uh, development entities, including uh, community-based agencies, including um, you know development companies owned by people of color and, and growing uh, businesses. Um, you know, all of that uh, contributes to the environment where we are seeking uh, diverse participants in, in all that we do. Great. Uh, we've seen a lot of... Um... You know, a lot of those initiatives on our, our side as well, um, you know, partnerships like uh, organizations like WRTP Big Step and MATC, as you mentioned, um, to, you know, to help ensure that, you know, ancillary benefits from those Milwaukee-based projects helps um, local residents. Um, how about, you know, affordable, the other side, affordable housing options, for example, um, the, the environment that's built afterward to help people. Um, what are the current strategies for increasing affordable housing, for example, in our city? Well, thank you for that question, uh, because, you know, Milwaukee, like a number of communities in our uh, country, is facing a you know, significant affordable housing crisis now, you know, to level set, as you, you noted up top, one of the things that we always have to recognize is that what truly makes a home affordable are, um, you know, the wages and the wealth that are available to individuals who are looking for housing. So we understand um, that, you know, no matter what we are doing to increase the amount of quote unquote affordable housing, uh, it's also incumbent upon us uh, an, an imperative that we create opportunities for folks to increase their wages, to build wealth, to be able to uh, invest into homes, to work with partners that um, you know are handling some of the all of the different challenges, whether it be home buyer counseling, whether it be some of the other expenses that people have, whether it be job training to prepare them to uh, to increase their available wages. All of that is extremely important, and we'd be remiss not to 
note that that is part of the affordable housing landscape. But in addition to that, um, you know, we have taken significant strides. Um, you know, much of that led by Mayor Johnson, both in his term as council president, uh, but also as mayor in terms of directing our department and city agencies in general to come up with a comprehensive housing strategy and plan for the entire city of Milwaukee, as well as one that works in conjunction with partners outside of city government. Uh, so one of the charges that I've taken here over the last uh, couple of years is working closely with the Community Development Alliance, which is a uh, group of um, philanthropic organizations in the city of Milwaukee, including um, the Bader Institute, Greater Milwaukee Foundation, uh, Zilber, Northwestern Mutuals um, uh, Foundation, uh, as well as other partners to work together to, to figure out how do we really tackle our affordable housing crisis? What we've determined through that work is that we need uh, over 30,000 additional affordable housing units. Uh, and if we are to reach um, you know, parity with the white home ownership rate in our city, we also need another 30,000 black and Latino um, homeowners in the city of Milwaukee. So our work is certainly cut out for us uh, in that regard. So we are, you know, in, through that work with the CDA, we have also looked at creating, uh, you know, innovative tax incremental uh, financing districts that will get uh, more affordable housing built. Um, we are uh, looking at uh, expanding the availability of our TID, our tax incremental uh, district uh, profile. Um, to work not just with those who are making, say, 60% of area median income, but also also those making, um, you know, up to 80, uh, in some cases, even 100% of area median income, so that we are putting more and more housing into the marketplace. Uh, and, and when you're doing that, you are taking pressure uh, off of the uh, additional housing, so um, should have a very positive impact on um, rental rates. Uh, but it also, um, you know, provides competition competition for those who are not necessarily providing, um, you know, housing that uh, that allows people to live uh, in a dignified manner. So we want every Milwaukeean to live in a home that they feel is safe, um, that they feel uh, kind of sets them up for success in the rest of their life. And that's so important, particularly for our young people, um, you know, each new development uh, that, that I'm at, um, each house that I see getting uh, renovated or even raised and uh, replaced. Um, you know, people are talking about the impact of that on not just the young people who will live in those homes, but the young people who will walk past it, people who need to know that, um, that their neighborhood matters and that by extension, they matter. Uh, so it, it is crucial that we put more housing into the marketplace uh, and that we work as hard as we can to make all of our neighborhoods feel like places that are safe, uh, that are comfortable, and that uh, allow um, you know not just current working adults but our future working adults uh, to feel like their contribution to our community matters and that in turn our community cares about them. Okay. Um, so it's it's late May right now, and I've seen some headlines that, um, for example, Milwaukee Habitat for Humanity is kicking off home construction. Um, and while we're talking about, um, you know, affordable housing and, you know, benefits for low-income residents, workforce residents, um, can you name some of the the ongoing developments, you know, the neighborhoods where new houses are going up right now um, through partners of the DCD? Yeah, well, I mean, there's work happening throughout the city, whether it's uh, King Park, uh, you know, Harambe, um, some work down in Silver City as well. Um, which we recently uh, announced as part of the mayor's uh, Adopt a Neighborhood campaign um, to really focus city resources um, you know, in that part of the city to make folks aware of it and really promote access to all of the various opportunities that the, the city has. 
Um, but while, you know, I, I can list, uh, you know, number of neighborhoods where things are taking place. The, the important thing is that this work needs to put, take place throughout the city. We have had some I I exciting and, and truly transformative developments take place in the downtown area over the last few years. Milwaukee has been a real outlier nationally in terms of kind of return to downtown uh, workforce and the vibrancy downtown. Um, you know, you just look at the convention center, which uh, the Baird Center, which recently had its, uh, you know, grand reopening and, and grand opening of the uh, the north side of the of the, um, the the extension of the, the convention there, uh, convention center rather, um, and, and the offices that are coming downtown. Downtown is, is booming, and we need to see that uh, extend out into the neighborhoods as well uh, for that sense of uh, dignity and pride that I spoke about, but also so that there are additional places for the people who are going to work at all these amazing developments to live. We want folks to be able to find what they're looking for in the city of Milwaukee, um, whether they would like to be you know, in, in a vibrant downtown and, and not have, uh, you know, a, a yard to take care of, or, or they do want to be out in, in the neighborhoods, have a little bit more space, have a yard, uh, have, um, you know, even greater walkability and access to uh, some of the amenities that exist out in the neighborhood. So we, we want folks to feel comfortable and frankly excited about living in neighborhoods throughout the city of Milwaukee. And that is, uh, that's an important part of our church. Yes. Uh, does this tie in with Mayor Cavalier Johnson's goal for, you know, 1 million residents having more places to um, not only live, but work as well? It, it does. And the, you know, the, the idea of a million residents, which certainly captures the imagination, um, you know, a part of the reason for that is because when you have a city that is growing, um, you are attracting more amenities for the residents who are already here, not just those who will come later. When you have a, a larger population, there are um, more events that will be drawn to Milwaukee. There would be, will be more, um, you know, more grocery stores uh, that are uh, plugged in, not just in the neighborhoods, but in our downtown area. Um, there will be uh, less uh, obstacles that we face in terms of funding transportation options throughout our city as well as into surrounding communities. It becomes undeniable that you need certain things, certain amenities for residents, um, and not just residents, but for um, our business users who, who and our um, you know uh, tourism visitors. Who, who may not live here. The, the more that the city is growing, uh, the more of a uh, you know increased population that you have, uh, there are going to be more things that crop up in the city uh, for, for all of us. And that's something that, that's very exciting. I mean, you think about all of the, the pride you've seen in Milwaukee that's really kind of exploded over the last several years. Um, and the vibrancy, as I mentioned, that we're seeing downtown, not just in office, uh, but in residential as well. Uh, imagine that taking place on a broader scope uh, throughout the city um, and just thinking about all of the things uh, that that will draw uh, into Milwaukee. And, and we're, we're excited about that. It, it energizes our department at the Department of City Development. And I know it energizes uh, my colleagues in other departments as well. Uh, as we think about, you know, not just supporting our current residents, but future residents also. Um, and, and we've got, you know, the, the basic infrastructure for that. Milwaukee was built for, um, you know, a city that had a, had a larger population. So we, as we look at tracking toward that 1 million, we know there are waypoints along the way. We get back up to 600,000. We get back to our peak uh, of 750,000. So, there, there are those waypoints and there are, um, you know, kind of benchmarks that, uh, that we'll see along the way. And, and we know it's just going to promote more and more development, not just to house those who are here, uh, but those who will be coming. Sure. 
You know, speaking of recent development, and I know we were just discussing construction across the city, but you know, I, um, it's noticeable that the lakefront is changing as well. You know, with the um, the Couture, the addition of the Northwestern Mutual Tower and Commons, for example. What plans does the department have for the development of the city's lakefront areas? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question, and it, it's kind of a uh, both a philosophical question and a a state law question. Um, you know, we uh, are, however you look at it, uh, you know, look at positive or negative. Uh, and it's probably more more positive than uh, than than the other way uh, with the public trust doctrine. Um, you know, in in Wisconsin, you know, our our waterways have to remain open to the public. It's part of the reason why you see relatively uh, little development directly, uh, you know, abutting our lakefront, because all of that that land has to remain accessible to to the public. With one of the you know, one of the rare exceptions there being, um, you know, Milwaukee World Festivals and the Sum- Summerfest grounds, which, um, you know, and it's one of the reasons it's, it's important that that is a, a nonprofit that is regulated by the public um, because public needs to have access. And there is, you know, that that backside of, uh, of Summerfest that generally is uh, open to the public, regardless of what's happening on the grounds. So we do want to see more development like the Couture, um, you know, like the future uh, Lakefront Gateway Plaza, which which remains, um, you know, something that the city would like to get done. Though there is a, a financing element uh, that needs to be handled, um, uh, and more than likely, we'll need some philanthropic support to get that done. Uh, but I think you know, development near the lakefront, uh, developments that um, you know promote. People spending more time, um, you know, at the lakefront and on our waterways uh, is something that we're very keen on. Thank you for the a ins- uh, little bit of insight on the strategy there. Um, I'm sure it's going to become a larger conversation, you know, as the Great Lakes region grows, especially um, near us with the connection to Chicago and um, development in the rest of southeastern Wisconsin as well. Uh Commissioner Crump, I am at the end of my questions here. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Well, I, I would just like to say, um, you know, again, I've probably, you know, touched on this throughout, but, you know, our, our goal of, of growth in the city, um, you know, is not an arbitrary one. It is uh, about, um, you know, ensuring that there are amenities for our current residents um, and recognizing that, and if you're not growing, you're you're probably shrinking, and you know it's not something that we're interested in happening. You know we have a number of initiatives, including the aptly named Growing MKE, uh, which is a zo- zoning overhaul to really create more streamlined opportunities for residents to uh, increase density on land that they already own. Um, to streamline the development process for those who are looking to create, um, you know, m- more multifamily uh, housing in the city of Milwaukee. Uh, we, we have the land to do it, to grow, uh, but we also need to uh, promote um, to both residents uh, and developers that if they take the time to uh, envision how they can support that growth, um, that it's going to be worth their time, that they're not going to get hung up on procedures. Uh, it's, it's an important uh, component of uh, Mayor Johnson's vision for this city, that we are open for business, and that as we promote community and economic development, um, part of that is cutting some of the red tape uh, and making it easier for folks to do the things that are helpful, not just for them, but for our community at large. So. Um, and we will continue to promote growing housing opportunities, growing opportunities for businesses to come and locate uh, in the city of Milwaukee, uh, and just growing the experience of being a Milwaukeean or visiting Milwaukee. We know uh, that we've had some great successes, but we also know that the best is yet to come. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Thank you. I appreciate the time.